Okay, good to go. And I welcome everyone on behalf of ADC Inclusive, ADC Webinars 2022. This is ADC Webinar 4.0, Full Mouth Rehabilitation, a Prosthodontist's Way, to be presented by Dr. Sankit Shah. And uh, let's welcome today's speaker. Uh, I take immense pleasure to welcome today's guest speaker, Dr. Sankit Shah. Uh, as well as I welcome each and every participant here. There are so many people who are waiting to listen from him and learn uh, the most awaited top topic and most interesting topic that is full mouth rehabilitation. So let's welcome and uh, very happy new year. Uh, Hindu happy new year to each and everyone. Uh, he's the first dentist uh, to have completed fellowship in clones and Spain concept and completed two cases. Uh, under the master Paulo Cano from Sao Paulo, Brazil in 2019. He's one of the first authorized BPS dentists in Gujarat to practice BPS dentures since 2010. He's one of the uh, one amongst few smilist dentists to have completed the smilist concept course from uh, Dr. Maria. He's, he has taken uh, advanced training in India for caste partial dentures. To his credit, he is also someone in India to introduce SAM system of articulators. He is a key opinion leader for SAM system of articulators Germany. He has introduced a new technique of verifying centric relations uh, on a unique instrument called mandibular positioning indicator, also called as MPI device. With special interest towards application of all intricate details in full mouth rehabilitation, Dr. Sankit has completed two years of comprehensive program on designing occlusion through Dr. Stephen Fellan, Dr. Frank Smear, and Dr. Coyce from Canada and US. He's an ardent follower of Dr. Pascal Magne and passionately practices indirect posterior venous too. He has a lot of specialty and uh, a lot of cases documented on his own name. He has a lot of publications and research done by him. So let's welcome and uh, hear it out from Dr. Sankit Shah. Yes, sir. The stage is all yours. Thank you, Dr. Sudhir. I mean, uh, you know, just uh, before a month or something, Dr. Sudhir gave me a call and he said that, uh, sir, we want to keep a webinar. So I asked him what topic. So he asked me, sir, what topic would you like to take? <laughs> so, you know, we were thinking of topics about indirect porcelain venials, full mouth rehabilitation, cast partial danger, precision attachments. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we came down to this uh, topic of full mouth rehabilitation, which is very close to my heart. Uh, not only full mouth rehab is close to my heart, but uh, occlusion is something which is, you know, very close to my heart. And occlusion is something which is dynamic and it is not static. What we'll do is we'll not keep this webinar as a straight theory class or a typical classical traditional webinar. Uh, I want the webinar to be very interactive. I am actually going to tell that if we have a full mouth rehabilitation case in our clinic, be it dentulous, be it partially dentulous or be it with implants, principles remain the same. They do not change. So what we are going to do, how we are going to do, why we are going to do, and most importantly, when we are going to do. That is what today's webinar is going to be. Uh, let, us be let, let me be very honest to cover full mouth rehabilitation in two hours per se uh, is practically impossible. But what my main objective is that I have to ignite that spark within everyone that we get the right gadgets with us and we start doing these cases with the right principles how they are supposed to be done. So as I told that occlusion is something which is dynamic and it is not static and we have to understand that our teeth should function according to the joint. Our joint should not function according to the teeth. And we have to fabricate our restorations, you know, be it a full mouth rehab case or a multiple crowns case or only anterior venial case or be it inlays, onlays or be it long span bridges. We have to fabricate our restorations onto something 
which is as close to the temporomandibular joint as possible. So to begin with, let us understand what occlusion is. I do not want to share my keynote directly right now. We do not want it to be a classical theory class. So, you know, let us understand few things. And then what I'll do is I'll share a few pictures of few devices and few techniques or something in my keynote presentation or a PowerPoint presentation. And then again, you know, I'll just stop the screen and again, you will see only myself speaking. And in between, if you have any questions, you can ask me in between or you can, you know, just buzz Dr. Sudhir and, you know, he'll pass on the message to me. So good to go. All right. So full mouth rehabilitation is something which is a very complex topic and we have to understand certain basic principles for it. We cannot start a case arbitrarily on a hinge articulator or as I love to say on a dog bite articulator. You cannot, you cannot. See, there are two types of chewers. There are two types of chewers. You know, if you take example of two animals, one, you have a rat which nibbles, which eats like this. And then you have a cow which eats like this in multiple planes. How do all we eat? We eat something like a cow. Our mandible is going to, you know, rotate and translate, rotate in one plane and translate in various planes. So we want to make our restorations onto something which is going to record all these movements and all these planes. So first of all, to begin with, we should know that where we are going to end. To start, we should have an end in our mind. And you need to know certain principles because as it is rightly said by someone that, you know, what your mind does not know, your eyes cannot read. If you do not know what is the basic principle behind it, you just cannot execute it practically. All right. So you need to know certain things. Let me not go into the theoretical things about it. But you need to know that to begin with, you need to diagnose the case perfectly. When we have a case of a full mouth rehab in our clinic, if we want to start with the restorative aspect of it, we need to start with the diagnosis first. You have to make sure that the patient is not having any kind of temporomandibular joint disorder or any kind of a click or any kind of any kind of you know muscle soreness or anything. So first make sure that the TMJ is all right and then you evaluate the muscles, you do the functional examination, the palpitations, the functional evaluation of the muscles of mastication, and then you go ahead with the diagnostic records. What are diagnostic records? First diagnostic record, what every one of us have to take is good pictures, good photographs, intraoral, extraoral. Now is the age of digital dentistry. Everyone is you know, loving to, you know, buy an intraoral scanner and then, you know, do it. But intraoral scanner, just making impressions with intraoral scanner is not digital dentistry. We have to understand that there is an entire workflow. So photographs, that's a separate topic in itself. Photographs is mandatory. Good set of intraoral and extraoral photographs. Second thing, we have to make sure that we evaluate the case, the heart tissues and the soft tissues in the patient's mouth perfectly. And once that is done, you are going to evaluate the muscles of mastication and see for any soreness, any hypertrophies or anything. How do you check it? It's a separate topic in itself. So once all these things are done, then you are going to shift to deprogramming the patient. Let us understand that if I ask you to open the mouth, and close the mouth, you are going to open the mouth and close the mouth in a certain way because our muscles of mastication are programmed to close in a certain way. Now, we do not know whether when you are opening and closing the mouth, that time or when the patient is opening and closing the mouth, that time the patient is actually biting in centric or not. Centric relation is the basis of full mouth rehabilitation. Centric relation is important we all have studied the definition, you know, in the, the posterior most superior position where the condyle articulates with the position in the fossa, which is independent of the curved contact, blah, 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 blah. What is it? How do we understand in layman term? Why centric relation is important? Centric relation is important because it is comfortable for the patient. Number one. 
it is repeatable by the patient number 2 and it is recordable by the dentist these are the three things which is extremely important so three ables we have to remember comfortable repeatable and recordable so this is extremely important so we have to make sure that whenever we are going to start any full mouth we have case you need to get the condyles in centric now how do you know whether the condyles are in centric or not in centric so what you are going to do is step 1 you make good set of diagnostic impressions after doing the diagnosis and everything now comes the making of diagnostic records so step 1 is after photographs you make good set of diagnostic impressions diagnostic impressions which material never alginate never condensation silicone no zeta plus no speed x nothing do not save money here you have to make your diagnostic impressions with addition silicone or polyvinyl siloxane proper ortho silicone impressions where you have got the proper sulcus step and where you have recorded the full palate and if it is a lower you have recorded the entire all the landmarks and all the repeating structures there in there so once you have recorded good set of diagnostic impressions you can send your patient back then comes the key you put the diagnostic cast and then you are going to make something called as a deprogrammer on top of it a deprogrammer is a device which is going to look something like this something like this okay it's a removable device there are various types of deprogrammers you have lucia jake and you have coish deprogrammer and you have kia device and everything this is a deprogrammer which i have you know over a period of time figured out that how a deprogrammer should, should be and deprogrammer should be something which should be worn by the patient which should be worn by the patient all right i request everyone that whosoever is joining in the in the meeting they should mute yourself all right that's a request all right so this is a deprogrammer this is a deprogrammer which you are going to call the patient in the second clinical appointment first clinical appointment you have made your diagnostic record of impression second you are going to give a type deprogrammer any kind of a deprogram a deprogrammer should be such that the patient should be able to wear it what happens we make a deprogrammer and the patient hardly wears it or if you give a deprogrammer such as a lucia jig or something i don't know how practical it is for the patient to wear a lucia jig at night you know or probably a device nta device it's not comfortable for the patient so this is something you know which is like a inverse align retainer all right it's for, it's from a durand sheet and it has a palatal ramp here it has a palatal ramp here. so what happens is the patient is going to wear this deprogrammer and the when the patient is going to bite on to this palatal ramp the mandibular incisors are going to come in contact on the, on to the ramp the mandibular incisors are going to come in contact so there is going to be complete posterior disclusion koi bhi piche ka daant milne nahi wala and in this way the muscles which are programmed to bite in a certain way will eventually get deprogrammed this is what a deprogrammer is how much time a deprogrammer should be worn or patient should wear deprogrammer for how long but it all depends from case to case but on an average you know anywhere between 2 weeks to 3 weeks a patient has to wear a deprogrammer so any kind of deprogrammer you give you make sure that the patient wears the deprogrammer and after a deprogrammer is made given to the patient and patient wears the deprogrammer for 2 weeks or 3 weeks you call the patient back for a third clinical appointment right i am not going to go into condylar guidance and anterior guidance and pelvic movement and immediate side shift and progress in side shift this everything is given in books specific instructions to me was that i have to tell you in such a way that it is executable or you can execute it from monday itself of course after knowing the principles so once your d programmer is worn okay for about 2 weeks or 3 weeks then you call the patient into your next clinical appointment then you call the patient into your next clinical appointment after the programmer has been worn and then you check whether the patient is deprogrammed 
or not deprogrammed. Now, how do you check whether the patient, this is something which is very important. How do you check whether the patient is deprogrammed or not deprogrammed? First time when you're giving a deprogrammer, you can just place an articulating paper there and ask the patient to bite and see where the mandibular incisors are making a point or a contact onto the palatal ramp. You will get a mark, blue colored mark or a red colored mark, whatever, onto this palatal ramp. After this mark has been made, you can just take a small round burr or a small straight fissure burr and mark a small groove onto this palatal ramp. Right? In such a way that, of course, the mandible does not get locked in. So now, before deprogramming, you have one mark which has been made onto this palatal ramp, which tells me that, okay, this is where the patient is biting repeatedly. Then when the patient comes back to you and after the patient is deprogrammed and you guide the mandible into centric or you ask the patient to swallow and close or you ask the patient to do the forward, backward and squeeze. This is one more technique, forward, backward and squeeze. When you ask the patient to do this, you would make sure or you would notice that what is happening is the mandibular incisors are going to make a point onto a palatal ramp, which was slight, which is slightly posterior to the original mark. That means our condyle has gone slightly posteriorly and slightly superiorly into centric. This is how you check whether the patient is deprogrammed or not deprogrammed. All right, getting it here. So first thing what you're going to do is diagnosis. Second is diagnostic impression. Third is making of a deprogrammer. Fifth is checking for deprogramming after the patient wears the deprogrammer. And once in the third clinical appointment, the patient is deprogrammed, what do you do next is you are going to make your bite record and phase bow transfer. Now, of course, I'm going to share a presentation where you will get an idea. But to begin my lecture with, I want a complete workflow that this, 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 this things are you are going to do if you have a full mouth rehab case. So when you want to see no company is paying me anything. So I'm not here to market any company. You can use any company, Facebook, any company articulator for general dentists who have just joined. Remember that a Facebook and an articulator comes in a pair. It always comes in a pair. Whichever company articulator you buy, that company Facebook will come with that particular articulator. So when you make a Facebook record, a Facebook record has a, you know, it has a bite fork, it has something called as a transfer jig, and it has something called as a bow itself. This is a Facebook itself. This is a Facebook by one company. I would not like to take the name of it. Okay, this is a Exio Quick Facebook, which comes with the articulator, which is the best articulator right now, which can which you can ever use. So once you make a Facebook record in the fourth clinical appointment, then you are going to go ahead and make a centric relation bite record. Centric relation bite record is going to be made with the help of the programmer in place. So wherever the patient is biting repeatedly and there is no muscle soreness and the patient is comfortable in that position, you are going to ask the patient to bite repeatedly. The patient is comfortable. The position is repeatable. You are going to make a notch on that particular area so that whenever patient bites, the mandibular incisors are going to go and lock in that particular position. So once the mandible is constantly bited in that position, you are going to make something called as an interocclusal bite record with whatever interocclusal record material you want to use. Interocclusal record material should be such that once it is set, it should not be flexible. So you cannot use modeling mats here. All right. You cannot use, I mean, seven out of 10 clinics might be using modeling mats. Or you cannot use a local aloe wax also. You have to use good company aloe wax. Or you can use your fast setting addition silicones, which are rigid. Or you can use your Ramitec or polyether fast setting, which is the best material what you can use. So what you can do is, you know, you can just put the bite record material into the posterior arch and ask the patient to bite. The, when the patient bites, the lower incisors are going to get locked into the marks or the notches made 
of the upper deprograma what the patient is wearing. So you are sure that the condyle is inside, right? So what you have done in this appointment is you have made a phase four record and you have made a centric regression bite record. So once these two things are done, once these two things are done, you can send the patient back. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have something called as a semi-adjustable articulator. Like before starting a clinic, you need to have a dental chair. That's the heart of a clinic. Same way, before doing a full mouth rehabilitation case, a semi-adjustable articulator and a phase four is mandatory. It is of paramount importance. You cannot manipulate it. Chalta hai, nahi chalega. You need to have a good articulator and a good phase four to complete and execute whatever is planned. So you are going to take the phase four record and the centric record and mount the maxillary and the mandibular impression of the cast or to the articulator. So now, however the patient is opening and closing the mouth, the same things are being recorded here, right? I, I, I'll, I'll go into the details of, you know, a phase four or a phase four record or an articulator. Once I share the presentation, I'll just tell you briefly that how do you do that. But right now, I want to tell you the workflow. So after the third clinical appointment, you have already made a phase four record and you have already made a centric relation bite record. And with the help of that, you have mounted maxillary and mandibular impression of the cast onto the articulator. After that, you're going to program the articulator. After programming the articulator, you are going to go ahead with the diagnostic wax up. That's the first basic step or the foundation of our full mouth rehab. See, we should know where we are going to end so that we can start accordingly. So the first start step onto this semi-adjustable articulator is diagnostic wax up. Diagnostic wax up, you will do it properly. Whatever occlusal scheme you are selecting, generally the occlusal scheme what you select for a full mouth rehab case is a mutually protected occlusion. What is mutually protected occlusion? Whenever patient bites in centric, there is uniform contacts, light anterior contacts in the anterior, uniform posterior contacts in upper and lower posteriors. Whenever patient protrudes or whenever you have an edge to edge movement of upper and lower anteriors, your posteriors do not touch. If the posteriors touch, your engram of the muscles are going to change and it can lead to some kind of a breakdown, structural breakdown of the teeth or ceramic will chip off or some kind of muscle soreness or some kind of a temporomandibular joint disorder. All right. So this is important that you program the articulator correctly, set in a proper anterior guidance, set in a proper condylar guidance with the help of your protrusive bite record or your Condylar guidance, average, 25 degree, 30 degree, whatever it is. Do a diagnostic wax up. Once diagnostic wax up is done, you are going to call the patient for the fourth clinical appointment. Abhi tak diagnosis is done. Fourth clinical appointment in which you will transfer the wax up into the patient's mouth and check how is the aesthetics. Check. How is the phonetics? Check whether the visibility is okay. Check whether occlusion, what you have given, is tentatively okay in the patient's mouth or not. Check everything. All right. So how do you do this? Whatever your diagnostic wax up you have done, you can take some putty. You can mix your putty and reline it with light body and make indices. Take your bisacral composite, your pro temp or luxa temp or cool temp or whatever material you want. Put it into it. Apply some Vaseline in the patient's mouth onto the teeth. Put that index, which is filled with pro temp material, into the patient's mouth. Let the material allow to set and remove it. So whatever wax up is there is going to be transferred into the patient's mouth. And then, you know, you can ask the patient to smile and you can check for the visibility. You can check whether your anterior plane is correct, there is no can, whether uh, proclination is correct whether the lower mandibular incisors visibility is fine, what type of occlusion you are having. You can have a fair amount of idea by transferring the wax up 
into the patient's mouth. So this is the fourth clinical appointment. This appointment, you can decide whether what type of restoration you want to give. In this appointment, you can decide what type of restoration you want to give to the patient. All right. Whether you want to go for a PFM crown or whether you want to go for a lithium disilicate crown or whether you want to go for a zirconium dioxide crown or full metal crown or you want to go for a partial veneer crown like inlays, onlays or veneers or tabletops, whatever. In this appointment, fourth clinical appointment, during the transfer of the wax up into the patient's mouth, you are going to decide that what material it is. And then you can give a rough estimate that, okay, this is good for you, option one. This is what you can do next if the buckets do not permit. And this is the third option. That is how you know you can formulate your treatment plan. So this is still diagnosis only. And then what you can do is you can start executing your treatment plan onto the patient. Onto the patient. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the presentation and I'll just run away through the presentation. I'll just run through the presentation so that you get an idea of what I spoke right now. Just give me a minute. All right. Uh, is my screen visible? Is the presentation visible, Dr. Sudhir? Yes, sir. It's it's there on the screen. Prosto extravaganza by Dr. Sankit Shah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you. So what we spoke about was diagnosis. So let us see. You know, before you do or before you start with a case, you need to develop a system where a patient is, of course, there, a dentist and a good laboratory. All right. And, you know, you have to be really passionate about your work and you need to decide that what level of work you really want to give to the patient. Right. So you, we have such cases day in and day out in our clinic. And, you know, it is not such that you do a root canal treatment and you simply uh, give crowns onto this without knowing that how much vertical dimension you have to open or how much vertical dimension you do not have to open, what is the amount of interoclusal space available. You cannot do maximum cases of my full mouth rehabilitation. We do it with vital preps. We do it with vital preps because you're opening the mouth. You do not, you are opening the vertical what dimension. The requirement. You do not require any kind of... Yeah, can you please mute your All right, so we have to go in a proper empirical way that what is the amount of vertical dimension you have to open. There are various techniques of opening vertical dimension. I will give you a good clinical guide. We'll keep it really simple. All right, so we have such cases. Now, you know, I have told that disclusion, disclusion is mandatory in natural dentition. What is disclusion? Occlusion is teeth coming in contact. Disclusion is teeth not coming in contact. So the occlusal scheme for full mouth rehab, most of the cases is mutually protected occlusion, where when the patient is going to do a protrusive movement, anterior teeth touch, posterior does not touch. And same way on the right side, right lateral and the left lateral. So, you know, such cases, day in and day out we have, and you know, we get confused that how do I place teeth here? There is no, you know, you see on the upper right side, you, there is no space, interoclusal space for the placement of context there. There is a crossbite on the left-hand side. So how do you see? So, you know, it is very important that as I have told that you have to understand centric relation. To do a centric relation, you have to understand that you have to give a deep programmer to the patient. All right. Now, let us understand two words. MI and CR. MI is maximum intercuspation. CR is centric relation. Understand CR is centric relation. It is bone to bone relation. So MI is teeth to teeth relation. That is maximum intercuspation where your teeth are joining tight. All right. So when your teeth are joining properly, you have a proper maximum intercuspation and your centric 
relation is correct that is your condyles are eccentric that is when you have co that is called a centric occlusion so you have to build up your case in co so understand that cr teeth does not come into picture it's a bone to bone relation which is three ables comfortable repeatable recorded all right so of course as we spoke diagnostic records is very important examining the patient is very important now this is interesting not everyone has seen this okay if you go to my instagram or facebook profile i have posted a video of how to make a centric relation bite record with leaf gauge this is a leaf gauge and you blue colored material what do you see it is a interocclusal record material silicone interocclusal record material so you know these are this is called as a leaf gauge what is this this is a deep programmer a lucia gene okay these are prefabricated lucia gene onto the left hand side of the screen and on the right hand side you have a lucia gene which can be made of pattern resin or compound or anything this is a lucia gene you know where you have a indentations this is a coise de programmer which many people give however i am not too much for it what we do is we take this durand sheets we have a many minister machine in house we punch the sheets cut it off and make a palatal ramp now you guys would be able to relate to me closely that you know what is a palatal ramp so you make a de programmer like this after a de programmer is made you ask the patient to bite you will have this contact so you will get a tentative idea that what is the contact before the patient is de programmed and after the patient is de programmed of course the patient is going to go slightly posterior and this is a leaf gauge which are autoclavable you can make your centric relation bite record with leaf gauge also this is a technique of a leaf gauge you guys can see leaf gauge first what we do is we take the so leaf. what we are doing we here is we are edges. you know we taking one leaf from or a second leaf two leaves and then we are All asking are the touching. patient to bite yes, they are touching when i am asking Forward. the patient to bite i am asking her whether Backward. the teeth are joining or not and then you know she is doing movements forward Open backward leaf. and squeeze. now what i do is i so when she does squeeze movement that is when the posteriors are going to come in Let's contact say i have taken a so what i do next is i seven, seven increase the number of leaves i ask her to place it in the patient all along the incisors i ask, ask the patient to do forward, forward movement forward backward forward and squeeze forward, i ask her again whether the posterior teeth are coming forward or not sorry, yes sorry sorry for interrupting backward. just uh, can you mute the voice in the video on the uh, ipad if gauge uh, twice it is first what we do is we take the first leaf just a minute let me figure this out how is this possible ask the patient to bite from behind so you are uh, getting a sound of my video also right if yes gauge. sir yeah first what we do is we take the first leaf we if we uh, mute that yeah now it is not audible now we can hear you properly sir. thank you so much okay 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 so what we are going to do is whenever we are going to i'm going to stop that video because i am not able to mute the sound so what we do is we take few leaves place it in the patient's mouth ask the patient to do the forward movement backward movement and squeeze right when they do that we do not want the posteriors to contact when the patient is going to do forward backward and squeeze that is when the condyles are going to go in centric so you keep on increasing the leaves till posteriors do not come in contact once that is done you can take a interocclusal bite record with the leaf gauge and then measure the thickness of the number of leaves so that you come to know that okay this is the amount of interocclusal bite record which we want to take another very good material of making interocclusal bite record is pattern resin or aloe wax right so pattern resin beautiful material it comes from gc however very very tricky working time okay very very tricky working time aloe wax is also good articulators and face bow is it worth an investment definitely yes definitely yes see if you right away do not want to do i mean to all the general dentists who are listening to me right now if you do not want to invest in a good quality articulator and a good quality face bow right now do not buy local ones that is what my personal uh, uh, suggestion is going to be do not buy local ones or the ones which are fabricated 
uh, you know, let me not take the names because that does not serve the purpose. So you have many good articulators, you know, first is Aman Garbak from our text where you have CP model, CR model and CPR model. Then you have Stratos. This is Stratos. Uh, I, I will be showing you when I stop sharing my screen. So you have Stratos 100, Stratos 200 and Stratos 300. So you, you know, you need to have a good articulator. If you can, you know, spend on a good iPhone, why can you not have a good articulator? So this is a Stratos 300. This is a UTS transformer, which comes with it. This is, you know, a Facebook. So you can invest in a good quality Facebook. Decide which laboratory you send your work to, complex cases to. Ask the laboratory guy to invest in a good quality of an articulator and accordingly buy that company Facebook. So you should have an in-house Facebook with you. Uh, this is one more company of a Facebook. This is a Facebook record, you know, where you will take a bite fork and the, the different things. All right. Let me not go into the details. This is a Facebook transfer. Remember, Facebook mandible is not in picture. Facebook is just for maxilla. Facebook record. You are recording your hinge axis and transferring it onto the articulator. That's it. There is no mandible in picture. Maxillary cast, semi-adjustable articulator mount For that, you are making a Facebook record. There is no mandible in picture. Right? Once a maxillary cast is mounted, onto the articulator, then according to your interocclusal centric relation bite record, your mandibular cast is going to be mounted, right? So as we spoke, good quality diagnostic cast should be there, proper interocclusal bite record material should be there. And you know, this is uh, one more technique, you know, wherein, you know, uh, we are going to verify the centric relation. Let me not go into the details. So after an interocclusal bite record has been made, you are going to mount your mandibular cast by opening the bite or dropping the pin, mount the cast, and then you are going to decide that what is the programming of the articulator, how much incisor guidance and condylar guidance you're going to give, and then go ahead with the diagnostic back subs, right? With a proper occlusal scheme, right? You look, you can appreciate the anatomy, it's not flat. You can appreciate the palatal anatomy of the upper anteriors. It is not flat because this is going to govern your movement of the mandible. This is very important. What do we see from the local labs? Flat palatal surfaces in our restoration. Well, your lower incisal edges are going to come with the contact with the palatal slope and accordingly the anterior guidance of the mandible is going to be governed. So you cannot have your restorations where the palatal surface of the upper anterior is flat. So you do a good quality diagnostic wax up. What I prefer is once diagnostic wax up is done, I make the impressions of diagnostic wax up in addition silicone and pour it in vacuum mixed dye store. So Joby diagnostic wax up, tha, you know, this can distort. I don't know, you know, many Many a times, the case does not turn up immediately. So you want your diagnostic wax up to be protected. How do you do that? You make an impression of a diagnostic wax up and pour it in dye store, right? And then you can, you know, make your indices, which is going to help you in preparations and transfers and temporaries. You know, this is how we make the indices for temporaries. These are the indices for the temporaries. And then you can transfer your wax up into the patient's mouth and you know do your nice beautiful preps check the indices whether the sufficient clearance is there or not there you know these are the copy plus c shells where you place it you prepare now here on the right central incisor a pisectomy was done some crown lengthening with laser was done and on other teeth we are going to plant veneers so once this was done, what we did was we had fabricated this copy plus C shell, the transparent shell, what you see, onto the diagnostic wax up duplicated model. We made holes into it. After these holes were made, with a PDL probe, 
you can just insert it through the hole and you can check the amount of clearance of the prep you have done. So this is a nice empirical way or this is a classical way what most of us do. You know, you make your grooves, depth orientation grooves and then prep it. And then of course you can use this indices, place your pro temp material and give your nice pro temps. Chair side, these chair side temporaries I feel are really tricky. They are really tricky because you know, to trim it intermittently, you should have good armamentarium with you. You cannot give overextended temporaries, you know, where patient cannot, uh, you know, clean intermittently. So it is of paramount importance that you are going to section your temporaries in such a way that intermittently you have trimmed it nicely. There are no overextensions. They are properly fitting onto the margin. So for that, you can use your Brotzler, Brassler or Comet Company's Vision Flex disc and trim the intermittental part of the temporaries and then equilibrate the provisions. All right. So this is how you trim the provision. Now, this is very important. Everyone is listening to this lecture only for this slide. Am I right, Dr. Sundil? Yes, sir. <laughs> everyone is listening to this because everyone wants Every... to know. Yeah. Yes, yes. Tell me, tell me. No, no. Everyone is uh, listening with keen interest and we are waiting to learn more. <laughs> Definitely. I'm here. On... So, yeah. So everyone wants to know while a case is going on or a full month rehab, you know, everyone will call our prosthodontist friend or a colleague. Yeah, a rehab case is first one start. Karu. Upper start, karu, lower start, karu, aage ka start, karu, piche ka start, karu, ya sab ek saath prepare. Karu. Yeah, there are some very bold dentists who will prepare everything at one go <laughs> and uh, fabricate all the restorations at one go and give the patients everything at one go. Probably their EMI is relapsing and they have to pay. But you cannot cheat your patient. This is not how a full mouth rehab case is done. So everyone has this question in their mind. Then how do you start it? From where do you start it? You start anteriors first or posteriors, upper arch, lower arch, what? Right? So you should have one basic thing in your mind. You should know something called as PAP protocol. PAP. Right? SIM. PAP protocol. What is PAP protocol? See, any full mouth rehab case, you are going to start with wax first. After wax up is done, you're going to convert the diagnostic wax up into the patient's mouth into plastic. And once your plastic teeth are done, that is your bisacral composite provisionals are there in the patient's mouth. They are fine. They are equilibrated. Aesthetics, phonetics, occlusal skin, comfort of the patient, everything is fine. You convert this plastics to ceramics. So three steps, wax, wax to plastic and from plastic to ceramic. This is the basic workflow of your any full mouth rehab case. You can just not skip this technique. So one of the technique is PAP protocol. What is a PAP protocol is that while you are doing your temporaries, you do the posteriors first and then the anteriors. P for posterior, A for anterior. And then when you are going to do your ceramics, you do your anteriors first. That is P A A, anteriors first and then the posteriors. So when you do your ceramics, the whole objective is to develop the anterior guidance first and then restore the posterior occlusion in committance to or in relation to your anterior guidance. So PAP protocol is something which you all can remember where while you are going to do your temporaries, according to the wax up of course, you do your posterior temporary first and then your anteriors. And while you go on to your ceramics, you're going to do your anteriors first and then the posteriors. Of course, you know, there are other techniques also, Pankiman shoulder technique and Hobo twin stage technique and this, that and all. There are so many things, but this is what generally is followed. Laboratory communication, very important. Do not use local articulators, papers, local articulating papers. You should have good articulating papers of 100 micron, 40 micron, 10 micron, 12 micron, 20 micron. This has to be there. 
all right do not trim whatever marks you have you know when you see a shadow there is a black part and surrounding that dense black part you know you have something called as a grayish part that's a umbra and a penumbra a uh, interference or a high point is going to look somewhat like that so do not trim or do not grind whatever blue marks you see in your interferences so you know generalized attrition cases you do your full mark preps like this give nice clear finish lines so that the patient should come to know that where you are going to stop okay all this preps are vital preps all this preps are vital preps okay and then you are going to convert it onto ceramics all right getting it here just a minute i'm going to come back onto the screen all right so just to revise our basic workflow should be that we are going to first make good photographs second diagnose for someone you know who all have joined me late main most important thing is we are going to make good set of diagnostic impressions on the diagnostic cast we are going to make a deep programmer after we are going to make a deep programmer we are going to call the patient again and check whether deep programming has been done or not done after deep programming has been done you are going to call the patient in the third clinical appointment where you are going to make a face bo record after a face bo record has been made you are going to do something called as a centric relation bite record after this is done the patient goes back you have all set of diagnostic records with you you are going to mount the maxillary cast onto the semi adjustable articulator with the help of a transfer jig with the help of a transfer jig i'll show you what a transfer jig is okay i'll show you what a transfer jig is so after you have made a face bow record transferred it onto the articulator you are going to mount the mandibular model according to the interocclusal centric record after your mandibular can i have a transfer jig a transfer jig transfer jig okay so after i have mounted a mandibular model according to the centric relation bite record i am going to program the articulator so whatever articulator i have for example this is a stratos 300 articulator so you know this has different readings here okay this has different readings here so which is going to this has a centric clock here and which is going to you know do the various movements so if the centric clock is open i can do the movement see if you can observe okay the the pin is moving the pin is moving so i can do my retrusive protrusive right lateral left lateral all the articulators so this is going to act exactly like a temporal mandibular joint so i am going to uh, do exactly like a temporal mandibular joint it's going to fabricate like that so just for someone who does not know how to make a face bow record okay as i told that a face bow record has to do only with the maxilla how your maxillary cast has to be placed on the articulator it's going to be placed like this or it's going to be placed like this or like this so we have to orient the maxillary cast to the opening axis of the articulator that is why you make a face bow record in technical theoretical terms you record a hinge axis with a face bow and transfer it onto the articulator so you make a face bow record so what i suggested you all is to buy in a you know invest or buy in a good quality face bow do not buy articulator do not buy a articulator okay fine so when you are making a good quality face bow record what you can do is this is a bite fork you place some material onto this place it place the bite fork in the patient's mouth once the bite fork is placed then you can place the face bow onto the patients so this is a earpiece type of a face bow this goes into the external acoustic meatus 
And this, of course, are the reference points. So what can happen is this can go like this nicely into the patient's mouth. Okay. And then what is going to happen is once the Facebook, you are going to record the Facebook record. Okay. The byte fork, this assembly and the byte fork assembly is going to be connected with something like this. This is called as a transfer jig. So what we are going to do is this transfer jig, I am going to record the Facebook. This is going to be attached. Everything is going to be attached. So I asked you guys to only invest in a Facebook. So once a Facebook record is recorded, you can send only this assembly with your maxillary mandibular cast and centric relation record to the laboratory. The laboratory guy will have this company articulator with him. And once he has this company articulator with him, he is going to simply mount the maxillary cast according to the Facebook record. And once maxillary cast is mounted according to the Facebook record, the mandibular cast is going to be mounted according to the centric relation byte record. So if you only have a Facebook, you can just send this transfer jig to the laboratory, then you'll do the needful. The laboratory technician is going to do the needful. Of course, you should understand all the diet, you know, all the rehab, rehab principles. It is not so important. And believe me, you are going to learn with every case. First case is never a pit pat perfect case. More and more number of things you're going to do, you're going to fine tune it and you're going to learn the nuances and the nitty gritties of it of how do you go ahead with a full mouth rehab case. So once a Facebook record is done, after a Facebook record is done, you are going to program the articulator. Put certain readings, condylar guidance, kitna dana, and decide whether you want to open the vertical dimension or not open the vertical dimension. Once that is done, at that established vertical dimension, the laboratory guy is going to do a good diagnostic max up. This is the key to your full mouth rehab. Do not save money in diagnostic wax up. If a local laboratory is going to charge you 100 rupees per tooth for a wax up, and a good laboratory is going to charge you 450 or 600 rupees per wax up, all tooth wax up, invest in that. Invest in that. Send your diagnostic models, Facebook records, and articulator to a good laboratory where a good diagnostic wax up is done. Right? Because this is the base, this is the foundation of your case. Once a good diagnostic wax up is done, ask the laboratory guy to send the wax up with the articulator if you do not have the articulator. The laboratory technician is going to send you a wax up with the articulator models mounted on the mounting plates open the centric lock check for the movements check whether the occlusal scheme what you had asked the laboratory guy to develop whether he has actually incorporated that occlusal scheme or not incorporated that occlusal scheme once you have a good diagnostic wax up with you duplicate the models Duplicate the models in dye stone. After duplicating the models in dye stone, prepare indices. Either you can make those shells on mini star machine, or what you can do is you can fabricate your putty indices, which always, always, and always have to be relined with a light body. They have to be relined with a light body. That is extremely important. So then, after you have fabricated an indices, you call the patient for a test drive. You know, the patient does not directly get agreed for a full mouth rehab. And you also do not know whatever you have planned is correct or not correct. If you want to buy a car, let's say if I want to buy a sedan, and I, you know, and my budget is uh, 10 lakh rupees or 15 lakh rupees, I'll go to Honda, I'll go to Hyundai, I'll go to Jeep, or I'll go to some other showrooms. And then I'm going to decide, I'm going to take a test drive of all the cars and then check how each car is and then decide which car I want to buy. Same way, the patient does not know that what he's going to get exactly. So this is something called as emotional dentistry. So you are going to give a test drive to the patient according to the vaccine, onto the indices what are fabricated on the vaccine. You give a test drive to the patient. 
take a video of the patient where the patient is speaking, smiling, and you know, and then you can put it on your big screen and show before and after. And that is how you can also probably come to know that what life changing experience it is. And patient can appreciate all your efforts. Plus, technically, whatever occlusal scheme has been incorporated in the patients in the patient's treatment planning, you're going to check it clinically, whether that has been transferred properly, whether the vertical dimension open is optimum, is adequate or not adequate, and so on. Once test drive is fine, you have a go-ahead from the patient. What you can do is you can decide the type of restoration that time only. Whether you want to go for a PSM restoration, coastal infused metal, or you want to go for a zirconium dioxide, or you want to go for a lithium disilicate. Now is the age of adhesive dentistry. Now is the age of bonded, you know, bondable dentistry, or as you call monobond restorations, where you have your, you know, you want to preserve as much of tooth structure as possible. You want, you do not want to give a crown always on a root canal treated tooth, or you do not want to prep all the surfaces of the teeth. You want to do something called a stable top, so you want to do something called as veneers. And you know, we all think that, yeah, well, will my veneers stay there? They stay. They stay if proper bonding principles are taken care of. If you bond your restorations in proper isolation with rubber dam, if it is fabricated from a good laboratory, if you have given sufficient clearance, if your surface characteristics of the preparation are correct, it stays, believe me, it stays for 15 years, 20 years together, right? So this is very important that in the test drive appointment itself, you decide do which type of restoration you want to give. Do not have this conception, misconception in your mind that if you want to give a crown to the patient, you have to go for a root canal. No, you are inviting problem for yourself and the patient also. You know, if you are going to remove some amount of tooth structure, if you are going to remove some amount of tooth structure, you are going to replace it. And once you replace it, if your marginal integrity of the crown is correct, if the marginal integrity of the tooth is correct, there is no harm in doing a vital tooth preparation. If the marginal integrity is correct, what is marginal integrity? Marginal integrity means that when you place a crown, under se koi bahar na ja sake or bahar se koi under na a sake. Means there is no chances of anything which is leaking out beneath the crown or anything which is going from the oral cavity from the inside part of the crown. There is no micro leakage there. There is good marginal integrity. There is no question of sensitivity. There is no question of post cementation problems. Provided you have followed proper cementation protocols. Use new diamond points. Do not use old diamond points. Whatever diamond points you are using, Brassler, Comet, money. Money is what is widely used, right? So use one diamond point per tooth. In my clinic, I have a principle. If I'm going to do a PFM prep, probably an R we take. So you use PF21S, money ka use kar ya TR21S, depending upon what margin you want to give. Use one diamond point per tooth. With this, while you are preparing your tooth, there is no pressure applied onto the tooth. There is no thermal injury onto the tooth. The tooth preps fast. You take care of the cartilage of your air water and pieces also. So make a principle that one diamond point per tooth. After you prep the tooth, make sure you are going to temporize it. Right? So in the test drive appointment itself, because the patient is going to ask you that, you know, what is the treatment cost? Which restorations to go for where? Whether anteriors have to go for Emax. Emax is a brand name. Lithium disilicate is a material. Right? Zirconia is a material. Lava is a brand name. So there are different, different kinds of restorations. You have to decide that what kind of restoration you want to give where. 
depending upon what is the structural integrity of the tooth, depending upon what is the interocclusal clearance of the tooth. Let me not go into much of the details of it. Right? So, you are going to decide what material you are going to restore the prepared tooth with in that appointment itself. You cannot tell the patient after I do the prep, no, you have to go in a proper planned empirical way. Before prepping only, you should know that how much you're going to prep. This is called as indices based preparation. So before prepping only, you are going to decide that what is the amount of preparation you are going to do in the patient's mouth. So you are going to decide the amount of restoration or the type of restoration in the test drive appointment itself. After that, you are going to decide whether what type of preparation sequence you want to go for. This is a common question. Okay, age ka, piche ka, upar ka, niche ka, what do you do it? Right? So what I do in my clinical practice what I do in my clinical practice is, all right, what I do in my clinical practice is the most important part is once the wax up is ready, the indices are ready, we prep one full arch in the first appointment. Give a long marathon appointment of three hours or four hours or something. Give breaks in between. Do all the preps in first appointment. Clinical appointment where the two preps are planned. So that is an evening appointment and when, when the preps are done, according to the waxer, the indices are fabricated, we give the chair side temporaries. Before we make a chair side temporary, you make a rubber base impression or you scan your preps, whatever it is. Right? So once this is done, the patient goes back in the evening, then the second appointment for the prep is in the morning. You prep all the upper. Right? Once you prep all the up, upper, According to the wax up, the indices what are fabricated, you give all the upper temperaments. So now, patient is having upper and lower chair side temperaments. Of course, before doing the temporaries, you have made your, you have made your, you have made your impressions, your upper base impressions, or you have scanned, or you have your STL files ready with you to communicate with the lab. So what we have done is, in the first clinical appointment where the preps are planned, so, ek saath niche ka prepare kar liya, impression le liya, chair side temporary le liya. Next day patient morning mein aata hai, again a marathon appointment of 3 hours or 4 hours, you prep all the maxillary teeth, give a chair side temporary, before that of course you make an impression. Once in the second tooth prep appointment, your maxillary temporaries are done, you have to equilibrate the temporaries. You have to equilibrate the temporaries. What is equilibration? Equilibration is removal of interferences, removal of interferences which you do not want. Developing your occlusal scheme because whatever has been planned in the diagnostic wax up, not necessarily exactly it is going to be transferred into your bisacral composite because the material has shrinkage. Your putty indices, your putty indices will be you know rocking here and there. So after the temporaries have been made, after the temporaries have been made you are going to equilibrate it. Make sure that the temporaries are equilibrated properly into the patient's mouth. Right? Now, once the temporaries are equilibrated in the patient's mouth, you send the patient and you then ask the patient that you are going to come to me next time where I'll give you a CAD CAM provisionals. A CAD CAM provisionals or Acrylic or PMMA temporaries. I would prefer a CAD CAM provisions. Why? Because I have already made a digital impression or an intraoral scan, or I have made my putty impressions. Now I want to make temporaries onto this, but I don't have any bite record. I don't have any step. How do I make it? Well, it is simple. You have your wax up with you. Send the wax up to the laboratory. Send the impressions of the preps to the laboratory. Laboratory guy has two things with him. The wax ups, the preps. He is going to digitally copy the wax up onto your PMMA temporaries. 
and mill the PMMA temporarily. So you have your CAD CAM temporaries, right? So when you fabricate your CAD CAM temporaries, you fabricate it in one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven. Four sections for the upper and four sections for the lower. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four, five, six, seven. So you have eight set of joint temporaries. We have, yes, yes, Dr. Vish. No problem. The question our session will do it. I think I'm 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes more, and I'll be completing the lecture. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So once we have fabricated the sectional temporaries. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, same way with the lower. You give it to the patient. So patient is used to that increased VD with your bisectoral composite temporaries. And once the bisectoral composite temporaries, the patient is used to it, you can call the patient after a week or 10 days or something. Remove the bisectoral composite chair side temporaries and give the CAD can build the temporaries in the patient's mouth. Again, equilibrate. Get the occlusion correct. So now the patient is having CAD CAM PMMA temporaries in the patient's mouth, in his mouth or her mouth. Once that is done, then you are going to simply transfer this plastics onto ceramics. Onto ceramics. So what you are going to do is you are going to replace the anteriors first. So you can remove your anterior temporaries, remove your posterior, uh, the lower anteriors and upper anterior temporary. So now when you check in the patient's mouth, you have only the posterior temporaries. So you have a good occlusal stop. Make impression with the temporaries, posterior temporaries, upper and lower. Get the anterior permanent restorations, put it in the patient's mouth. Do not cement it with the final lutein cement. Cement it with polycarboxylate or cement it with a good Temper non eugenol temporary. So once you have anterior ceramics in the mouth, then you can replace your posters and convert it into ceramics. Once everything has been done, everything occlusion and everything has been set, and then you can remove the temporary cement and then put the temporary cement, uh, remove the temporary cement and put the permanent looting cement. Or you know, if it is adhesive dentistry, you can. Uh, silenize it and you know apply the bonding agent and etch it before that and whatever it is follow the steps into it and then do your final restorations once final restorations are done you again check for your occlusal scheme you should have mutually protected occlusal scheme you know believe me if your occlusion is not correct the ceramics are going to chip off you know what is the worst thing to happen to dentistry Dentistry is market driven. We give to the patients what patients want. Patients don't understand what is right for them or what is wrong for them. So the worst thing to happen to dentistry is you know this warranty cards. 5 year, 10 year, 15 year, 20 year. I just saw a price list of a laboratory where they are giving lifetime warranty. What is that? If your occlusal scheme is not correct, and even if you have done a best quality lava premium zirconium dioxide monolithic crown, it's going to fracture. Or if you have a sharp line angle, it's going to fracture. It is going to fracture. So if the occlusal scheme is not correct, material can fracture. We blame the laboratory guys that there is some fabrication error. Repeat it for us. No. You again make it, it's going to fracture again. So occlusal scheme has to be correct. So this is how you are going to convert your wax to plastic and from plastic to ceramic. All right. So this was all about the lecture. I do not want to make it more heavy for all the participants. Uh, the webinar is open for discussion. I think I can have good healthy questions. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful session and it was really nice lecture. It was wonderful. I hope to uh, listen from all our participants. I request everyone uh, to switch on your video and interact with today's guest speaker because uh, Dr. Sanket Shah, he is uh, more interested for one-to-one -one interaction, right, sir? Yes. As he uh, planned this session, uh, he asked for more time for interaction with you. So uh, you can come on the video.
or you can ask question in chat box or you you can raise your hand and let us know we will read the question for you go ahead you can ask me anything you can ask me anything. you know uh, whatever step diagnosis part the treatment planning part you can ask me about articulator you can ask me about facebook you can ask me about cement you can ask me about the preparation dynamics about the materiology any doubt you have you can ask me uh, sir how to decide whether to give the pfm crowns or the ceramic crown zirconia crowns uh, ma'am it all depends upon various factors number one where we are going to do the restoration whether it's a anterior it's a posterior number two where you are going to give the restoration and what is there in the intervolist arch what is the amount of interocclusal distance available or interocclusal space available as we all know that metal free ceramics like zirconia or lithium disilicate wax as they say they require less amount of clearance and your pfms they require comparatively more amount of clearance so for me the criteria is going to be the vitality of the tooth the amount of interocclusal clearance available and you know what mistake we all make is we only check for occlusal clearance we never check for clearance on the labial aspect and on the palatal aspect whatever tooth we are restoring they have to follow the contacts and contours of the adjacent teeth so we need to have sufficient clearance on the labial and the palatal or the lingual aspect also so if the structural durability of the tooth permits me that yes i can prep the tooth more i can go ahead with a good cad cam pfm crown or a dmls crown also now our thinking has changed first you know what used to happen was if the crown height was less we used to make auxiliary retentive grooves and place a crown on top of it or we used to go for crown lengthening increase the height of the tooth and then go for a restoration but now because of the advances in adhesive dentistry no matter even if you have 1.5 or 2 mm remnant tooth structure you can go for a bondable restoration you can go for your lithium disilicate monolithic crown so these are all the factors there are various factors actually what you would consider whether you want to go for a pfm crown or a zirconia crown uh zirconia again zirconium oxide again is going to be you know uh, zirconium oxide again is going to be uh, you know uh, uh, just a minute ma'am i'm sorry uh, krishna the key is with the driver driver the key is down so zirconium oxide again you know there are two types of restorations one is monolithic and one is something which is layered all right so depending upon what restoration you are going to select where you want to give that is how you would select whether it's a pfm crown but pfm i would advise if you are going for a pfm it at least has to be a cad cam pfm or dmls if you have sufficient clearance you can give excellent aesthetics with pfm also it is not necessary that you have to go for a zirconia crown if you have given good 1.5 mm or 2 mm of clearance layer everywhere you know a good technician can do wonders with pfm solves thank you we have a notion i don't know why this is correct or not the zirconia crowns are not good for the posterior because they put i mean they are main, mainly they can cause fracture of the tooth or something like that is it correct uh, or zirconia crown you know the main problem with zirconia crown zirconia as a material is fantastic but you know there is a vast difference between the modulus of elasticity of the crown and the tooth the remaining dentine because of this many a times you know the tooth fractures if the tooth inside is weak you know many a times when we prep the tooth we see that the remaining dentine is hardly 0.75 or 1 mm and inside we all have a pore builder so this is what we mean by a weak structural durability of the tooth right so you know not always aesthetic should be the criteria when i am preparing the tooth at that time i feel that you know there is less dentine i would try to keep my restoration over contour there rather than weakening the structural durability of it so if the tooth 
structural durability is correct zirconia will not cause any harm to the tooth but if the tooth is weak and you have lateral interferences see not every case is a full mouth rehab case right so when we do zirconia bridges or when you do zirconia crowns or when you do multiple unit zirconia crowns and if there are lateral interferences and the inside tooth is weak that will fracture at a survival and you know patient will come with a crown with a tooth and a pore build up inside and then you will simply have to extract the tooth and do a implant or whatever um, sir um, it's most of the time patient is uh, if they have come up for the full mouth rehab they might be having the bruxism so if the patient is having bruxism should we give the night guard after giving the full uh, full crowns or should we avoid i mean what should be the we should avoid we should have the only the pfm crowns or metal crowns see anything what you do after a rehab case should not break uh, should not break so i mean a night guard will be just to protect the occlusion but patient is not going to use night guard every time yeah patient is not going to use night guard every time so before you start a case you need to diagnose that why the patient is having a need to undergo a full mouth rehab of course most of the times we see generalized attrition so we need to diagnose that what is the cause of that attrition whether it is one some parafunctional habit or whether it is some other cause most of the times bruxism is because of improper occlusal scheme there is no mutually protected occlusion one interference here and there and that's going to ignite or complicate this parafunctional habit so in your rehab you are going to improve the occlusal scheme so the bruxism problem should not sustain should not be there okay. but still if you have done restorations and you want to protect it you can just give a sectional night guard to the patient upper or a lower that would be just probably uh, you know dil ko sukoon milega apne ko ki nothing is going to break otherwise there is no need of night guard sir uh, just last question uh, he suggested a good lab also because if i am working today so i don't think that there is a good lab who can do that thing so if you have if you know any lab you are making the uh, crowns na no? that's why i am asking uh, where are you based where are you based sorry where are you from sir i am in delhi south delhi yeah so see uh, i don't know any good labs in delhi but as i said that you should get a good diagnostic wax up done okay so we are in the western part of india and there are multiple good labs you know some in kerala some in mumbai some in pune so you will figure out the names right so uh, you can give it to a laboratory you can communicate with the laboratory that i want this occlusal scheme check whether he has done a good wax up only then go ahead with that case to that laboratory for conversion to your cad cap pr or pmms or your ceramics so you know this any local lab can not do a rehab case uh, uh, let me see sir i you. have tried the dent care and illusion lab also but they are also not so good in doing that Uh, I do uh, not want to pinpoint sir, anyone. May I tell you, I, sir, one name? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Katara Dental Lab, Pune. Try that. Uh, I don't yes. have any complaints, sir. You must have heard about Katara Dental Lab. They provide courier service also. All India. Courier service. Yeah. Everyone providing the Katara has a problem that they don't. They don't listen. That if I am saying there is a gap over here, there is a margin a problem. They don't. They are not correcting it. So I am. Uh, I found the problem. because i am working and i have sent almost to lot of labs so i thought if there is any lab which is oh, no okay exactly because sir is doing the work with them so okay. if, you know exactly it is very easy for them i mean for me to explain them what i want and why i don't what i don't so and you if, can send to uh, you can send your lab to uh, work to precision in mumbai rahul mr rahul you can send it to katara and send it to advanced rahul also sir and i have uh, one uh, disaster case with rahul and he was also the one person who said okay no earlier there is no uh, clearance now uh, after making hey, there, every there must be some problem there must be some problem uh, in 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 communication or anything so i am talking about a rehab case if you want to rehab case starts with a wax up so 
you know uh, no laboratory will give you all kind of work which is good and now, now the wax up where there was good anatomy in the parental aspect what i showed in my presentation that was done by a local lab guy in sakinaga in anderi that's 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 a very small area in mumbai okay but that fellow has magic in his hands when it comes to using wax some people have magic in their hands when it comes to you know using some other things so you really have to be selective and you have to work your own way right tali do haath se bachta hai hamesha nahi understand sir uh, wo actually problem ye tha ki uh, if you have if you have any problem if the lab is finding any problem they should tell me okay this is a problem so that i can correct the prep but after making the final and then you are saying no it is break uh, it is broken because you were not prepped it properly you have not then it becomes difficult so a uh, company no, so what you can do is when you make a final impressions you can ask them that before going ahead with the design of a crown tell you that these are the limitations with the preparation or these are the limitations with the case modify it at that stage only and only you know because then, uh, this is the thing you know as i said it's market driven no one wants to send the work back and no one wants to call the patient again and repeat the yes absolutely sir thank you so much sir it was very nice lecture and my lot of doubts have been cleared thank you so much thank hope you hope you find the good lab and let us know if you find it <laughs> uh one question is there is, do you, do you have any assistance online uh, if we have a fmr case because it is uh, always difficult to plan it like uh, we we do the cases but if you can guide us online and uh, obviously one webinar is not enough online assistance is also not enough and uh, do we have any hands on course for this i mean you can contact me on social media or my phone numbers share the photographs i am open see my best way my you know i open my heart and teach uh, i i am not calculative in what to speak and what not to speak and i always believe that you know sikhane se do cheez apne ko bhi zyada seekhne ko milta hai right so if you are stuck somewhere in anywhere in any kind of a case pertaining to prosthetics and you need my assistance i am always available you can contact me on facebook or instagram or my number which dr sudhir can share and uh, you know just put a message first before calling me and whenever i see the message we can definitely communicate that this is the workflow what can be done for this particular case fine fine do we have to transfer uh, the go transfer thing for multiple crowns also or only for full mouth no face mode transfer is mandatory if you want to do you know if you want to only do your six anterior crowns or six anterior venias face mode is mandatory if you want to do only your bridge upper and lower bridge it is mandatory single crown face mode not really required for that we have to understand that what is the actual rational of a face bow and an articulator which none of us practices what ideally should be done even before you want to give a crown to the patient is you have to take a face bow you have to deprogram the patient you have to mount the mandible model to centric check for the interferences in the patient's mouth and then go back to the patient equilibrate the patient in the permissible limit then do your prep and then fabricate the crown this is the ideal way of doing a crown good you know what schellenberg or rosenstein or twinman says your prosthetic book says but nahi hota hai it's not practical but yes whenever you are doing multiple unit cases or whenever you are doing your smile designing cases i think you should have a face mold because with face mold now you cannot go wrong in your anterior plane what happens is we make a impression and they they mount it on a three point or you know those plastic clip articulator you know, pathetic pathetic is the word right i mean just imagine wo jo clip of articulators jo aata hai jo lens mein se aata hai where is that jahan se moment hota na usko condylar fulcrum bolte hain aur aage ka daant ka midpoint wo distance kitna hota hai itna 3 inch apne case mein distance kitna hai zyada hai na 5 inch 6 inches so how do you expect something which is fabricated which is half of that distance to perform well into the mouth which is double of that distance it doesn't work so at least when you are doing your critical cases where patient is investing patient is 
you know, uh, having a lot of hope on you, then you would deliver the aesthetic as well as the function. Facebook is mandatory. These are the questions. Uh, if anyone else has any question. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, this is not uh, related with the full mouth rehab, but I do have a case of complete denture. A uh, patient is 81 years old. He already had a denture. But the problem is there is uh, no ridge at all. And he again came to me and he said that he wants to make the same type of denture. But when I started taking the impression and after the impression, I could see, uh, I can show you the photo of the cast, sir. I don't know whether I can. Um, yeah, please go. I can show it. It is like there is no ridge at all. Is there any other option or something we can do in a treatment part, sir? Uh, you're telling me about a completely edentulous case where the patient is the old error and the mandibular ridge is resolved and the patient is yeah, complaining exactly. of ill-fitting dentures, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, so, you know, let me be very honest. Mandibular dentures, where the ridges are totally resolved, you cannot get that peripheral seal and you cannot get the retention. Okay. So, best thing what you can do in this case is do a border molding in such a way that it is not overextended. That is number one. Okay. Right? Number one, do your border molding in such a way which is not overextended. Number two, while you are doing your jaw relation, keep the lower occlusal plane slightly lower than the level of the lower lips. Okay, sir. You have your commissural area here, which is the junction of eight muscles, which is called as a modulus. You know that modulus creates a havoc for a mandibular denture. When that modulus is active, your lower denture now pops out. So how do you nullify this effect? You are going to do your jaw relation in such a way that the mandibular occlusal plane is going to be at a lower level than the level of the lower lip. And the posterior occlusal plane of the mandible, of course, it has to be not above the level of the retromolar pad, the two-third of the retromolar pad. This is number two suggestion. Number three, you arrange your teeth in a neutral zone area. What is a neutral zone area? Your tongue and your cheek. Whenever they are under function, your teeth should be placed in such a way that the tongue and the teeth, the cheek, the buccal mucosa and the tongue, they do not apply any pressure onto the flanges of the mandible. Okay. If you do these three things properly, the stability of the denture is going to be enhanced and the patient is going to be much more comfortable with the denture. Okay. This is okay. what you do. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Pleasure. Yes, any other questions, please? I think everyone knows everything. Yes, Dr. Sudhir, do we have any questions? Sir, you're muted, sir. Oh, no, I am not muted. No, I am. I, am. I was. I was. No questions are there for now. Uh, but uh, there are people who are asking questions on uh, like chat and one is joining now. <laughs> so uh, we'll be uh, posting this session on YouTube. Uh, you can attend. Like yeah, you can attend this session once again who have missed the part or anything. And uh, anyone has any query or wants to plan a case online or any online assistance is required or you want to attend a hands-on course anything uh, you require i'll share the contact number of uh, dr sanket shah and more uh, anything you require you can directly contact him so can we finalize this meeting yeah i think if there are no questions we can wind up we will be sending you a certificate of appreciation for this wonderful lecture sir Thank you so much.
thank you. session. So thank you everyone and wish you all a very happy new year once again. See you again in the next webinar. ADC webinars uh, 5.0 that is on PRP in facial aesthetics and uh, hair. So see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Goodbye. Good day. Thank you.